War rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shattered, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. As these two powerful forces prepare to clash, only one will rise victorious when the dust settles. While this and countless other battles rage on, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This video is brought to you by the support of our channel members and the FLGS partners, Warp Biomimics and X-Planet. Looking for a painting commission? Check out artwstudio.com. Hello and welcome to Season of War. Today we're excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. Matt, happy to have you back. Always happy to be here. Another game on the channel, this time bringing out your rats. Uh, first time you brought them to the channel. Uh, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. But Having lots of fun with them uh, locally at some recent events. Yeah, I mean, they've always been a lot of fun, but now uh, there's a lot of synergies that I'm allowed to do yep. without having to sacrifice some stuff. So yep. it's, a, it's a good time until uh, they FAQ me. So. Yeah, goblins want the same treatment of a little more streamlined that'll, keywords. That'll and, never happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed, but um, not, no goblins here today. Um, we did put this match up for a vote and the YouTube members chose for me to play Sons of Bayamat. Uh, they want to see the smallest guys versus the biggest guys. So rude. Yeah, so it'll be a, a good match here to see how it goes. And interesting here, we're playing um, the Mighty and the Cunning is the mission we're playing today. We've decided, because it's kind of a silly rule, we're not going to do the bonus victory points for killing uh, deletion veterans. Uh, in some matchups like this one, when only it could be very uh, polarizing and you don't see this mission in event packs because of that rule, yeah. so we're just going to play it as a standard hold one, hold two, hold more. Uh, two points for your uh, battle tactic. I think that'll make it a pretty good, pretty good balanced mission. Yeah, I mean, it forces us just to go in the middle, and it doesn't, like, I mean, th this type, if we were playing it the normal way, it would it would heavily skew in your favor. Yeah. You, you have no GV. Right? No GVs so. here, and you have little clan rats. I, and their whole purpose is to die. Yes. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, otherwise, why don't you just jump in and take us through your list? Yeah, cool. Uh, so, as Jordan already mentioned, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of clan rats. So I have three units of just just min 20, 20 clan rats. Mm -hmm. But in each clan rat unit, uh, they're going to be housing uh, one or two weapons teams. Uh, and I've got four of the rattling cannons. Yep. Um, which for sixty five points, the amount of damage that they can potentially put out is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, my general is my Arch Warlock, who is right here. Uh, he has more more warp power. Um, it's pretty standard if you're running Storm Fiends, which, mm -hmm. moving on to them, I'm yeah. running six of them. Uh, these are still gross. Yeah, in, in, very solid. Um, very expensive now, so uh, nine is overkill, but it's still very fun. I have a Warlock Engineer over there. Um, he's kind of out of the battle. He's just going to be dishing out... Uh, Warp Zone Sparks, yep. uh, but he's also got more and more warp power. And uh, I brought the big boy Thankul, can't leave home without him because he's just so good in the magic phase now. But I, I've equipped him different than probably what we're ever going to see in a tournament yep. because you're always going to see him with the flamers, but because you voted that I'm playing Gargants, uh, <laughs> I, I, two mortal wounds is not what I want. So Why not? That's great. Uh, yep. It's great against a block of 30 skinks because they're just gone, but um, well, yeah, to he's see got... what the what the fists do. do. Yeah, I you know it'd be interesting because I think yeah. this is the first game I've ever played with the fist. Yeah. So uh, the the damage is potentially there, and uh, his the spell that he knows is flaming weapon to yeah. boost that damage up a little bit more. Um, and to round it out, endless spell wise, I've got the boat. Um, that's just to put Thankwill in. Ferry him around. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm playing the new, more expensive uh, purple sun. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to auto kill anything against you. No, but uh, we were actually talking the the nerfs to the purple sun actually made it better against stuff like Gargans. Uh, yeah, Just because rather than doing the D6 mortal wounds, it's six plus D6 mortal yeah. wounds. Yeah. So I mean, if I do roll that one, I have to get it within an inch. But yeah. I mean, you don't have anything to screen that to be get a, get away from an 100%. inch on you. It is easier to screen if it was like my army yeah. uh, and you're throwing sun at me. Or but I just have to run away yeah. inside of nine. But uh, I mean, my purpose of bringing the sun was 
I mean, the, the auto kill is fun, but, but the purpose for the sun, especially for this army, yep. is uh, is the extra rend. Yep, for um, sure. And then looking at my list, I think this is the first time I've ever played Taker Tribe. Uh, I have the Kraken Eater, obviously, as my general. He has um, the, the uh, sandals to mm -hmm. give him a better profile on his stomps, uh, flat three damage. And then his general trait is to kick 3d6 inches rather than just the 2d6. So hopefully try and uh, reposition all these objectives uh, favorably for myself. Uh, and then I have uh, two gate breakers. One of them with the magic bug has uh, the arcane tome, um, flaming weapon, mm -hmm. obviously the uh, combo there. The other one is just a naked gate breaker. And then I have two single uh, man crusher guardians. Those guys are actually both in bounty hunters. So could help me chew through the, the clan rats a little quicker, but faster than you would anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's pretty much it. Always, uh, you know, low model count for Sons of Amat, pretty elite uh, as far as things go. I was actually, because I went for the bounty hunters, it did put me at five drops here. I could have been down to like as, as low as three, Yep. Um, which w actually would have been made a big difference here because you were four drops, Matt. Uh, yeah, so I've got Expert Conquerors and, yeah. and Battle Reg, so um, also, with, with four drops I actually get the choice. Yes, so, sir. Um, I think I still I want you to go first because okay. uh, I need you to get a little closer to me so I can... <laughs> Fair enough. Pew -pew you. Sounds <laughs> good. Well, with that we'll jump into Sons of Bayamat, turn one. While the cunning Skaven wait for their enemies to make the first move, the Gargans choose the battle tactic against the odds. The Gatebreaker fails heroic leadership while the Arch Warlock succeeds. The Gatebreaker also fails to cast Mystic Shield. The Gatebreaker hurls their boulders at the Arch Warlock, who uses all of defense and takes 4 damage. The Kraken Eater uses all of attack and throws debris at the Storm Fiends, dealing 5 damage. The Man Crusher uses forward to victory and makes his charge into the Clan Rats, dealing 1 mortal wound on impact. The Storm Fiends unleash hell, dealing 6 damage to the Man Crusher. The Man Crusher stomps the Clan Rats, killing three, then attacks and deals six damage. The Clan Rats attack but deal no damage, then use Inspiring Presence and return three models. The Sons of Bayamot score two and more objectives and complete their battle tactic for five points. All right, Sons of Bayamat, turn one. Um, not expecting to get much out. It wasn't the worst. Uh, I have a bunch of shooting this army, which I am not used to, between the two Gatebreakers. Um, was hoping to kill your uh, Arch Warlock. Got one of the hits, wounds through, yep. uh, four damage, but it would have been it would have been crazy if I got them both through. Yeah, I um, mean, it was just like a, a sliver of just in range. Uh, yeah, yeah. Measurement and, mistake on my part, but that's okay. He yeah, moved. well, I could have moved a little more, yep. so it would have been hard to zone, but yeah. And then uh, Tracking Near couldn't see him, so he shot at the Storm Fiends, five damage. I take one more, and that's the Storm Fiend on, so uh, start chipping him down. Two more. Two more, all right, plus one wound on those guys. And I ran six inches with that one guy, so I'm like, oh, let's give myself the chance at a charge. Rolled. Failed the charge, needed something big, re-rolled it into an 11, Got made it big. in, yep. took such damage in on the each hell. My hope with that guy was actually, I was going to pile in and tag the Storm Fiends also um, in combat and try and keep them tied up. As soon as I t took the six damage in on the each hell, I felt a lot less confident about that. Mm -hmm. So at least he's still alive and just kind of annoying there, tying up those rats, messing with you in some capacity, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and yeah, that's that. So you're going to obviously be able to kill him pretty easily, but hopefully he's in the way and he's the target. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he came in and took out a decent amount of clan rats. Uh, yeah, seven of them died. Nothing too crazy. Well, no, yeah. he brought three back at the end, so that... It's, yeah, it's not a big deal, and then... Uh, just... The, the bracketing to me actually was you know, notable um, in the Unleashed Hell, so... Yeah, he lost, he lost two damage, but the 11-inch yeah. charge actually pulled out two of my guns. Uh, or one of my guns, sorry, the, yeah. the, the, and the big one would have been the rattling cannon. Yes. Um, because so that's another three Could have been worse. Uh, yeah. So I think if you had the 10 inch that you needed, uh, this guy would have been in yeah. and potentially would have killed him. Yeah. So yes. in the end, uh, it is what it is. I'm playing with my destruction brain. So uh, going mm -hmm. forward and trying to smash mm -hmm. and I'll get hold two, hold more objectives mm -hmm. and we'll turn it over to Steve in turn one. Preparing to unleash their firepower, the Skaven battle tactic is fire, fire, more, more. The Arch Warlock fails heroic recovery, and the Kraken Eater uses heroic leadership. The Arch Warlock casts more, more warp power and Mystic Shield on the Storm Fiends. The Engineer eats a Warp Stone Spark and casts the Purple Sun of Shayish. Thankwell casts Launch in the Soul Seeker and Arcane Bolt. One unit of clan rats uses the gnaw holes to reposition and claim the right objective. All four rattling guns deploy from the clan rat units using hidden weapon team. The warlock engineer shoots at the man crusher, dealing two damage. Two rattling guns open fire at the man crusher but choose not to overcharge and only deal three damage. And I thought Skaven always overcharged. The Storm Fiends finish off the Man Crusher and deals two damage to the Gatebreaker. The Skaven score two objectives and complete their battle tactic for four points. Um, well, I wanted to do a little bit more, uh, on that turn. I mean, I got the max points I wanted to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, I got my tactic and I was only going to be able to get two points anyways out of it. Um, but I wanted to kind of position myself in a way where I could, uh, if I got the double, it would have been a little bit more fruitful for me. Uh, but, uh, my, my yep. rattling cannons, uh, I whiffed all of their... Yeah, you didn't overcharge them just to keep them safe. Right, yeah, because yeah, I mean, with... You, what, good chance you're, you were taking them down no matter what, right? Yeah, and, and, and you know, it's still a lot of shots, but I yeah. uh, was kind of hoping uh, I didn't have to um, overkill from these yeah. guys into them, but, but that's okay. It didn't matter. They didn't have any other target with the short range stuff no. anyways. No, you're right. Um, so... Um, Preemptively, I, I've moved out all of my weapons teams yep. uh, because if Jordan does get the turn, there's a high likelihood that the <laughs> clan rats that uh, they were die. hiding within are going to be dead. Yep. Um, so I think that was a smart move. I've uh, I kind of ran Thankwell a little bit uh, just to, uh, so he doesn't eat a bunch of boulder shots because I'm <sighs> fairly certain that that's potentially where it's, they could be going because he is a high priority target. Yeah. Um, maybe. Who knows? So. I'm down a point, but yeah. uh, if I get the double, um, 
I could I could potentially do a decent amount of damage coming up. So well, let's see. Yep. Uh, I'm winning ties. That's cocked. That's still a one. Ah, I win. Matt also rolls a one. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think in this case, Matt, I'm actually going to give you the turn here. Okay. Um, hope I can weather your shooting phase and, and all that here, because I I think it's just the long range um, guns from the storm storm fiends that can get into me. So yep. hopefully I can weather it here um, and then set myself up maybe for a, a big priority later in the game. That's what I'm gonna go for. Uh, so we'll go into Staven Tide turn two. Not expecting initiative, the Skaven forces try to capitalize choosing the battle tactic against the odds. The Sons of Bayamont make the left objective a proving ground. The Arch Warlock fails heroic recovery while the Gatebreaker recovers two wounds. The Arch Warlock casts Mystic Shield on the Storm Fiends, but fails more and more warp power. Thankful teleports using Launch of the Soul Seeker, but takes one mortal wound in the process. The Skaven use a Warpstone Spark to give the Storm Fiends and two Rattling Guns plus one damage. The Gatebreaker uses All Out Defense and the Storm Fiends open fire and they deal seven damage. The first Rattling Gun overcharges, deals no damage, then blows itself up. Live fast, die young, I guess. The next rattling gun overcharges, deals two damage, and then blows itself up. But better, I guess. The Skaven score two objectives and complete their battle tactic for four points. Um, yeah, not, uh, I didn't do nearly as much as I'd hoped. Um, I'd hoped to get a, a few more shots off. Uh, uh, my one rattling cannon, I, I didn't roll very many. Double ones. Double ones. That's so the double ones not only were very low, it also killed them. Yep. Uh, and then the other one I had higher volume of shot and more went through, but Jaina rolled 80% of the saves. Yeah, uh, which 80% is, on four ups yeah. is pretty good on average. So, so. Uh, Jaina is coming to more tournaments for Jordan. Yes, now. rolling all my right? priorities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> helping daddy kick my butt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, there wasn't too, too much I could have done. The long range guns did, did damage because I mean, it's an egg three rend. Yeah. Um, but um, I kind of just repositioned to at least funnel you to where I want you to be. Yeah. Uh, but it's this round's gonna hurt because uh, I haven't done much. I couldn't do much. Yeah. I've been. I was kind of trapped. The eleven inch charge that you made really, really trapped me back here because I couldn't maneuver some stuff. Around yeah. Like I there's stuff to. in the way. Uh, and that was my hope. Yeah. So making that lucky charge was pretty big. Yep. Um, but I, I. But as you saw with the shots uh, that. Uh, you forgot about, but I had to keep yeah. my Storm Fiends back because if all of those shots hit me, it would have polished off uh, my melee Storm Fiends where yeah. me doing more and more, more more warp power would have... Uh, Could, it it would have sucked yeah. because then I'm starting to kill off my range yes. that, I, that I need to keep yeah. around, right? Yeah. And that's the thing, it just slowly start chipping the, that unit down. Um, but again, I like it worked out for me here, giving away the turn. Yep. Um, I, where I was able to weather, you actually killed two of your own guns. I took nine damage after healing two um, from you know heroic recovery at the start. So yeah, yeah. Can't uh, complain about how this went for me. I mean, this is this is a pretty pretty scryer game. Yeah. Uh, I love this list because it's hilarious. Because uh, yeah. I'm either going to kill you really fast or kill myself just as fast. Yes. And it's leaning towards the second part yeah. of that. Uh, but that's the fun of Skaven. Um, I'm still in it. I mean, this is still a boatload of wounds you got to chew through. Yep. Um, and I've got a very mobile Thankful that's uh, running around right now. Yep. Um, so... Not clo and, and it's that thing where it's like, you knew I was having turn here, so you didn't want to be too close. Yep. Um, but always a threat. 
Yeah, yeah especially but, with the move, he gets to move after the boat, right? So He gets to move after the boat, uh, yeah. but the problem is, uh, with how tied up I was back here, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I could have thrown Thankful in there and probably did a lot of damage, but then yeah. this would have turned around and said yeah. goodbye. Yep. So, I, I, I want to keep him around a little bit, but yeah. pretty soon I got to get those fist weapons in there yes. and see how they do. Start punching some guardians. Yep. Um, thank you. <laughs> But Jane is pretty eager to go. Yeah, she's going to uh, roll 80% of hits. And yes, wins. let's hope. Keep rolling good. Uh, but we will jump into Sons of Bayonet. Turn three. Turn two. Turn two. <laughs> Can you say two? Nice. Thank you. Taking fire but barely noticing, the Gargans look to start the smashing and chooses the battle tactic, desecrate their lands. The Gatebreaker and Arch Warlock both fail heroic recovery. The Gatebreaker casts Flaming Weapon, but is unbound. The first Gatebreaker hurls his boulder at the Clan Rats, killing four, and then the other Gatebreaker fails to hit. The Kraken Eater uses all at attack and throws debris at the clan rats, killing five. The Man Crusher deals three mortal wounds to the clan rats on impact. The Storm Fiends unleash Hell, dealing nine damage. The Central Gatebreaker deals two mortal wounds on impact, and the one on the right deals five. The Man Crusher roars at the Storm Fiends while the Gatebreaker fails his stomp. The Gatebreaker starts off combat using All at Attack and the Inspired Triumph, dealing 20 damage to the Storm Fiends. The Storm Fiends deal 2 damage to the Man Crusher, who then fights back and deals 3 damage to the Storm Fiends. The right clan rats deal one damage to the Gatebreaker, who then kills all the rats. Get wrecked. The Rattling Guns attack and finish the Man Crusher, then the Storm Fiends use Inspiring Presence. The Sons of Bayamot score two and more objectives and complete their battle tactic for five points. Sons of Bam at turn two was... Sons of Bam at turn two? Yeah, it is, you know, with the prio, the way things are going, it's been been going the Darden's way at the moment. No no ones on the Sons. That's Janus. what my rats just did. Yeah, Jane is so happy. <laughs> uh, the rats are streaming though, killed two units of clan rats. Brought the uh, Storm Fiends down to two of four remaining. It is the two guns it's the it's the yeah it's the short yeah. range guns but you and i are within that range yeah uh so if i thanks jana yeah um if uh if i get the priority i can do a lot of damage to you with those just those two guys yeah. so uh my rattling cannons in melee killed your man crusher which was the best yes yeah it's true <laughs> and, oh, again. I, and get the max points though here um <laughs> You know, no complaints right now, and again, setting myself up for a big prio here. That's a four. And I win ties. You win ties, Matt, 50-50. And I rolled another one. Matt rolls a one. I know, I feel yeah. the same way. Jaina's happy. <laughs> uh, going Darden's way today, or to jump into Sons of Bay, Matt, turn three. Taking no prisoners, the Gargans look to continue the brutality, choosing the battle tactic, gaining momentum. The Gatebreaker uses their finest hour, and the Arch Warlock fails heroic recovery. That rat just isn't brave enough. The Gatebreaker casts Flaming Weapon, but is unbound. The Kraken Eater uses Get Off My Land. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> can never not say it like that. And kicks the objective 11 inches. 
The Gatebreakers hurl their boulders, but misses their target. And even using all at attack, the Kraken Eater misses as well. The Kraken Eater deals one mortal wound on impact, then stomps the clan rats, killing three more. One Gatebreaker roars the Storm Fiends, and the other uses Smash to Rubble on the Nahul. The Gatebreaker uses all at attack, fighting the Storm Fiends and taking the last two down. The Clan Rats attack the Kraken Eater, but only deal one damage. The Kraken Eater fights back and kills the other remaining Clan Rats. The Sons of Bayamot score two and more objectives and complete their battle tactic for five points. Sons of Bayamot, turn three. The board, I mean, I think I almost outnumber you on the board. And against Sons of Bayamot, that is not a good sign. At least you gave me a beer today. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to be a good host. Um, yeah, what can we say? We saw it all on the table. Uh, big priority, obviously, to take it and try and seal the deal. Yep. I've got the board of objectives, 30 models on each of those ones. Plus that objective is now 11 inches Oh yes, that I way. kicked that one um, with my cracking eater because he can do that. And at this point, uh, Matt, you want to jump into a Twitch Skaven turn three? Yeah, I mean like this game has been what Skaven does. It's either you're going to win big or you're going to lose big and it's the latter on this one. So Yeah, well, uh, you got Thankful who's itching for a fight. Uh, we're putting Thankful in close combat, which you will never hear from anybody ever, right. but it's happening. <laughs> Sounds good. We will go into Skaven Tide turn three. Looking to salvage anything they can, the Skaven battle tactic is desecrate their lands. Thankful and the Kraken Eater both use their finest hour. Thankful casts Arcane Bolt and then casts Mystic Shield on himself. The Arch Warlock supercharges Warp Lightning Storm, dealing one mortal wound to a Gatebreaker and two to the other. The Engineer uses a Warp Stone Spark to cast Warp Lightning, dealing five mortal wounds to the Gatebreaker. The Arch Warlock's Warpfire Gauntlet deals two mortal wounds to the Gatebreaker. The first rattling gun overcharges and deals eight damage to the Gatebreaker, but blows itself up. The next rattling gun uses all at attack and deals 14 damage and finishes off the Gatebreaker. Thankful and the Kraken Eater both use Titanic Duel. The Kraken Eater uses all of defense, though Thankwell still deals 20 damage to him. Thankwell also uses all of defense, and the Kraken Eater only deals 4 damage, then Thankwell heals 2. While they take down a Mega Gargant, the Skaven hold no objectives, but do complete their battle tactic for 2 points. This was just for fun, um, and I still ended up managing to lose my, my unit uh, yeah, by myself. Yeah. Uh, you did take down one of mine though. Yeah, which is so I mean, this just goes to show, like this, this is why these guys are worth 65 points. I mean, anything that does a decent amount of damage is worth 65 points, but with the proper buffs, I mean, these. Uh, so the one that lived, weird, um, shot 21 shots, all out attacks with threes and fours, and I rolled really high on the wounds and neg two rend, um, but you did all out defense. But I mean, that still puts you to a five up with neg two rend. Yeah. Um, and you failed a decent amount of them where I, where I, I took them down with two. Yeah. So 130 points uh, took down, I mean, yeah. he had nine wounds. So still 26 damage you yeah. put through. But yeah, like he took nine <laughs> wounds, but I still did 26 damage with 130 points. Yeah. Also with the purple sun. That helped, right? That's mm -hmm. another named one to rhyme, so yep. it negated the all of defense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I mean, it just would have kept him out of, out of neg one. But I mean, like, again, 65 points for max uh, 618, yeah. 20, uh, I don't know, a lot of shots. Uh, yeah. But we've seen, like, 
This was the hu the high swain. Yep. Previous turn was the low swain, right? Where you exactly. did very, almost no damage, yep. right? Yeah. So so it didn't go both ways. Here, the purple sun helped punch through as well, as yeah. we said. So I mean, yeah, max twenty seven shots yep. over here. If this guy shot twenty one of them. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, again, very scryer. It's it's super swingy. It's a yep. super swingy army. Uh, if it goes wrong for you, it goes wrong for you very, very quickly, which is what happened today. Yep. Uh, but thankfully for one turn, I, I showed you how it can go right pretty yeah. quickly as well. Yep. So, Well, um, unfortunately, being that I'm 30 bodies there and take your tribe, you don't take the objective and it's leaving you uh, in the dust and points in a, in a way. Uh, yep. So why don't we, let's roll priority. That's a five. It's three, so yeah, you would take it. Yeah, here at, at this point, Matt, I think we can talk it out. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, it, actually, if you take it, it's interesting just to see how fast you can kill the Gargans. Yeah, I mean, um, again, with the high side, I could have probably shot yeah, and shot killed him off the board with more yeah, wounds. Yeah, and with Thankful there too. Um, but I'm so far behind. Yeah, and at this point, all I'm gonna do is walk over here, uh, try and break that. I break it. So both those knot holes are break, broken. Yep. At this point, these three objectives were over here. Avid actually would have been able to kick that one further away as well. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, there's just not going to be anything you can do uh, points-wise. No. I mean, my turn, what I would do, uh, I'd probably just kind of eat my losses. And then, so in your turn, i move the boat up towards Thankful, and then yeah. i just boat him over here and try to get objectives. Yeah. And that's for like a team scenario where, where you, just you close the gaps. Points. Um, but I mean, yeah, game's lost, uh, is the, the DPS check is there uh, yeah. for me to kill them, but it didn't happen. And, uh, that, that charge was really, really big turn one, because yep. it pinned me down for three turns. Got in the way. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Getting that, that big one, but that's, that's part of it, right? Like you want to, I wanted to keep you back ideally from shooting the, the 12 inch shots yep. at any of my targets, which effectively you didn't for two turns. No, I couldn't, yeah. Yeah, and and that's where I think also that, that turn two, for me being in a position where I could give it away and know I was safe from those yep. shots. Yeah, and then I just That basically dog. was the turning point of the game um, because you had been defensive in case of the uh, in case I took the turn the double, allowed me to give it away, yep. and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there was much I could have done in that instance. I mean, I could have, I could have tried to play more aggressive in my turn. Uh, with, with this dude being there, but even then, if I moved up, that was a big well, gamble. And that's the thing, if I win priority as I did, yeah. I then, well, if my I then put two, you're taken. exactly, I take the turn and I put yep. you know, two Gargans into them. And so. it was a damned if I did, damned if I didn't. Yeah, it's um, interesting. And actually, we, we again, we played without the, the bonus points for Glacian Veterans, because it's just silly. Um, why? Yeah. There shouldn't be an omission. Um, this was, otherwise though, I like fighting across the middle ended up being favorable for the gardens, right? Yep. You could you were able to dance around a little bit on the edges, but just not enough. And gardens are fast enough that they can still get into you. No, and and, and yeah, I mean this Skaven's in a weird spot. Skaven's so fun, by the way, but it's in a weird spot where if I run into gardens, um, there's two ways I could play Skaven to be okay, to have a chance, in, yeah. in my opinion. Um, Verminous. Uh, with a bunch of storm, uh, storm vermin, yeah. and uh, and the vermin lords kicking around. That's a very tanky list, uh, where the storm vermin is going to run around and hurt you a lot, uh, and it'll be kind of harder for you to kill me. But I mean, with Meg three run, not so much. Yeah. Uh, so Scryer is the way to go into into Gargans. I mean, I've had games. I played a lot of Gargans, and I've had games where I've done 108 damage in two turns. Yeah. To to Gargans, and I've had games today. Where I did nine. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Yeah, it's it's more. But then, obviously, as you said earlier, the the two guys doing a ton of damage shows the potential in that. But you know, Steven, unreliability is the name of the game. But it's uh, swinginess, exactly. It's fun, so fun doing a ton of damage. Sometimes blowing yourself up. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say I'm thankful because I was the only one that killed my rattling cannons. I this didn't let you true. kill a single one. Yeah, 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 you killed three out of four. You're not taking all of them. I didn't even get a chance. Yeah, yeah well, not whatever. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's always fun. Uh, Skaven's always fun. Gargants are... A challenge. A challenge. Yeah. Uh, I think they're, they're still always a challenge, especially yeah. now that they're not giving the extra points on death. Exactly. Um, I think I... But so I we've seen them rise back to the top of, like, you know, the meta, win percentages. Yeah. You know, 
potential to go, you know, have positive win rate out events, like all those. Well, and then, I mean, you, you go Arcane Tome, throw a Cron Spine in there, because we all know how much we love that guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can have three Megas and an Incarnate running around, which is yeah. even Scary. more gross. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Gargants are in a good spot. It's interesting yeah. to see where their new book comes out with uh, two, yes. new, two new units. Yes, very excited for that. Uh, they get a named guy who apparently is a priest, so that could be fun. Yep. Right. Um, and then the, the dude with the big, big club. Hammer. Coolest weapon so far on any of the Gargants. Yeah. In my opinion. Uh, it's, it's just a monster killer. So, Massive hammer, yeah. Uh, if I did that with Thankful, Thankful would have died into that guy. Yes, so. yeah. <laughs> very true, but... Yeah, here, unfortunately, one for the rats. Um, the little man pressures uh, in Bounty Hunters I thought would be kind of cool to, to test it out. Didn't do much. Like, they got into the clan rats at one point, but then you healed a bunch back over the next couple of turns and it didn't really matter. Though they did soak the Unleash Hell. Um, I think in hindsight, I would have been better in this, at least in this situation, on the three drop um, and, and not taking Bounty Hunters. Mm -hmm. and that's always the trade off with it, right? Is it worth the extra drops? Are you gonna get the matchups where it, the Bounty Hunters really pays off? And I don't know if it is with the Man Crushers. I don't know if they're, they're enough damage or um, uh, there's enough stuff out there. They're not, yeah, I guess they're pretty, they can be pretty quick with the run and charge. Yeah, I, I, mean, oh, I mean, as you saw there, that really, really put a damper in my plan. Yeah, um, but even, I could have just gotten in and not done as much damage and it does the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I like the Man Crushers, just I don't think it's worth, I've, and this is my first game with them in Bounty yep. Hunters. I don't feel like... Not I, Bounty Hunters, but having them in your list is so yes, good. Because if you yeah. run into those shooting armies, yep. those are the ones that you want to unleash hell. And they're yep. like, oh, cool, I bracketed a man crusher and he loses an attack. Right? Yeah. But then I'm not bracketing your big dudes and they just follow in behind and just yep. slap. Yep. Right? So. Yeah, for sure. Um, otherwise, though, I, I actually enjoyed playing this list. And, and the Countess 30 Bodies is really tough, even in Densed Army, with Galatian Veteran Expert Conquerors. Like... Well, they're, they're, they go down super quick, so I'm not worried well, that's about what it. I was going to say, yeah. when the GV goes down to a swift breeze, as, yeah, as yeah, rats yeah, do. Yeah. But, right. um... Great for scoring, that's obviously the name of the game, so... Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... Here. Big bloody one, taking down a couple of gardens, um, but... Minor victory. Yes. At the end of the day, though, it is going to be a Sons of Bayamat uh, win, so uh, shout out to the big boys, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Otherwise, Matt, thanks for coming down for the game. Anytime. Looking forward to the next one. And guys, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to check out our membership. There's a ton more uh, in there as soon as you join. A bunch of different stuff. So definitely check it out. Learn more. Click on the buttons. And we'll see you soon in another battle report.